really good position. All right, that was just a little. That picks up the angles. Okay, we're on. Let's go. So an attacking start uh, from the blue team. Uh, our coalition. They're the one-shot wonders. And there on the other side of the map, we can see Allegiance. That is the Coddling. They've all got to the middle. And they're holding position. Um, first couple of kills have gone the Allegiance way. 2-1. Everyone's going at the moment into 4-2. So they're... Interesting, there's Le Mughal Z. Not running a sniper rifle from the looks of it. He's running an assault rifle. Hugo taking up a corner position. I think someone's going to pop their head round. He knows the father is there. He's seen him. And he's made the kill. Well done, Hugo. Using range on his kilo gun. And Le Mughal Z in. He's got in behind Martin. Oh, <laughs> Martin with the drop shot. That's a really difficult thing to pull off, actually. He drops down, like prone, fully lying down on the floor. The impact of that means it actually makes you a little bit more accurate. So you're more likely to hit more of your shots. Um, but it's quite hard to pull off and still keep your aim going at the same time. But that's the kind of player he is. OK, so we're 9-9. This is even. Zafara so um, kind of getting down in a prone position there. We can see that the one-shot wonders have taken up quite a defensive position. Um, Everyone else is in the cave, apart from the Mughal Z. So there's an interesting flank happening here. They've managed to flank them almost completely. And you can see Craig getting caught right between two people. That's the worst thing. What's interesting is they've flanked and gone completely round. And <laughs> Hugo's <laughs> found himself a lot of space, is what I would say. Um, here we go. The Mughal Z is flashing, which I think means that he's in. But he's, that will come back in a little bit. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know what it means. Let's watch it. Let's see what he does. Here we are, going through the cave. This is quite a tight space. Um, we're right behind Le Mughal Z. Um, he is heading out. He's got a flank on. That's a really good position. So that run through the cave has put him in a good shot. And, and he's just taken out three players in a row. What a great play. And he's actually linked up again with Kira, and they're holding the midfield. So that's 12 17 for the Allegiance. I'd say that they're playing a pretty, pretty tight game, and they've managed to sneak ahead. Pretty good. I'm going to keep going with the Moogle Z. He's moving well. Also managed to get the flank on again. And Craig hasn't picked up, although someone took him out. Craig hadn't picked up that he was there, so it was looking dangerous for Craig. Craig holding a window, uh, crouching, keeping an eye on things. 13-18. So we are going to have to see a couple of kills with no deaths coming from the one-shot wonders. Who can pull it off? Right, Renolf is a <laughs> clever play. So that, that you're seeing right there is like a well. He crawled up that well and took out Martin, I think. Now it's going a little more tense. Oh no, wait, there's Martin. Martin took the one kill, but then got taken out by Renolf. Ah, so Allegiance are, are really getting ahead here. 22 to 15. Not looking good for one shot wonders. Renolf making a good attacking attempt, but just outgunned there with two players. Took him down. A bit better shape coming from the one shot wonders. Except Craig is, Craig's running over to join Martin. Let's go follow them and see what happens. Now remember, they're behind. Oh dear. Not good. Hugo with a good kill. Uh, here he is running through. They run right past each other. That happens sometimes. Martin didn't know. Hugo went right past. Like ships passing in the night. Uh, battleships, uh, in this case. Um, fortunately, two on one. <laughs> a desperate attempt by... <laughs> Luke to uh, bash his way out with the butt of his gun. A tricky one to pull off at the best of times when you're facing uh, a hail of bullets. <laughs> and he wasn't able to. They got taken down. So we're with Kira. The two Lemugles there uh, working side by side. Actually, no, that's Renolf and Kira. 
definitely working together on this. And you can see that's, that's how they, they, they're managing to hold that lead. The Mughal Zig has gone back to his sniper rifle. He's obviously decided that there's enough space on this map to make that work. He's got a bit of height. Um, someone's going to have to pick him off. That's going to be really tough to dislodge. Uh, Kira getting taken down. 22-29. The Mughal Z holding position over here, man. And then the other Lemugal down the bottom. That was good defensive position. But everyone's decided to push. Now, if it were me, the modeling side, I'd probably be playing more defensively. But let's go watch Kira, because, heck, it's fun to watch people attack. Kira's on! A bit of a run, but oh no! She got caught at the side by Morris' laptop. And then <laughs> payback from Ranoff. Definitely trading here, but what you can see is that there's generally one extra kill in every interchange going to the uh, going to the codlings, and that's making all the difference. Twenty six thirty one, but still not a huge gap. This is not a runaway. We're gonna have to see whether whether Martin and the team can actually hold it together. Here goes. The Moogle Z, he's going to run racing across the map. An interesting sort of shape now. You can see Reynolds and Kira sticking together. Good team play. They've, they're often seen together. Whereas um, maybe the, I don't know, that's a tactic, it's just the way they play. But holding position is good, and being aware of your other players is really, really important in a good team deathmatch. Let's watch Hugo. He's gone off on a lone mission. He wants some kills. He wants some glory. Can he find them on this side of the map? Not sure. He's all by himself. Uh, no, he isn't. Uh, that's Reynolds Swallow has come back. I'm going to go down the other side because there's not much happening here. There's just a lot of running around going on. We haven't heard a gunshot fire for a while. Okay, slim lead being held on. Martin there with a kill on Kira. Sorry, not Kira. Z, the other Lemugle. Kira has now been taken up um, by Martin this time. Let's go watch Jeffrey a little bit. Jeffrey doesn't know that there's somebody right there in front of him. He's gone the other direction. Okay. Interestingly enough, he's peeled away in the wrong direction. The action's happening the other side. So we've got Hugo and Ranolf hiding upstairs, um, kind of in the one corner of the map. Nothing much happening. It's interesting. I don't know if this is particularly good strategic play or if everyone's just getting a little bit lost because the map's quite big. Um, so <laughs> I'll let you as the viewers decide. Um, I'm going to go uh, with strategic play because I think that's the kind of players we're talking about. Everything's happening inside the cave. Um, Martin's put down some smoke, which is interesting. Um, possibly, you know, there's an interesting standoff happening here between the Mughal Z. He knows that the smoke has happened, so he's getting, trying to get a flanking position. Martin's looking the wrong way. Uh, oof. Now, if they're listening, the Mughal Z is coming through. Martin's picked him. Can he make the kill? Can he? Yeah. Martin did. That was good play. He held that position, but he's given his position away, and he's been pincer moved. Hugo coming up from behind. Ranulf keeping the attention, and it's that kind of one-two action that is the reason that the Codlings are 41-34. They're just getting in those little pencils, they're getting in those little one-two moves. Let's go inside the cave and see what's going on. All right, oops, let's go through the cave. Hugo running along and just got taken out by Jeffrey. Jeffrey with a nice slide afterwards, you know, just to make sure he's gonna go Everyone's going up there. No, they're not. Martin and Morris Laptop together for a little bit. As you can see, it's very much kind of intense. Team Deathmatch is a very intense sort of single person experience. You're kind of vaguely aware of these other players and you sort of know what they're doing and, and it's important to have that situational awareness. But ultimately, you need to kind of be razor focused on your gun. Now this is interesting. Luke is camping by himself with his handgun. <laughs> and everyone else just came in and sort of shot him. I, I, I feel a bit bad. Maybe he'd run out of ammunition. That could happen. He had nothing but a handgun left. Um, 
It's not great to have a handgun when someone else has an assault rifle. That's my top one. If you're ever in a real battle zone, try and go and have a handgun. Don't have a handgun. Okay, so let's see. Lots of action going on here. We're following Kira. She's been taken down. 41-48. So the, the actual overall distance hasn't changed by a lot. So there's everything in this still. I think it's quite a, a low-scoring game. So we might just run out of time. Um, so that, that extra number is going to be good. Safara with a good kill. So he caught... He caught Kira all by herself because I think she just respawned and so he was able to make that kill without anyone knowing where he was. So he's still up and that's that's the kind of play that enables you to scrape back a point. Hugo also alone and isolated. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, he's kind of building. He's in a good position. Uh, but he got taken down by some incredibly good fire from Mark. Martini with a long range shot to take out Hugo in the building. That was a difficult one to pull off. Okay. So the map, this has been a really sort of rolling game. I'm zooming right out so you can get a feel for the whole map. What you can see is that the blue team is sort of camping down. I think we've still got, I guess this is Luke. He's probably still camping over here. Come in. Yep, that's Luke. He's obviously decided that that is a good spot for him and he's gone with a longer range gun. He's trying some sniping. Um, <laughs> but Lemugle Z, I think, is on to him and is coming in. And what's going to happen here? Who's going to win this? Lemugle Z. Unfortunately, I think that play was red. And I'm, I'm sort of hoping to see Luke maybe drop that tactic because I don't think it's working for him right now. Luke's really actually really good on the run and gun. Um, so you get to see him get back in. He might have got a bit tentative, so I don't think he knows that map, this map that well. 47 to 56, so the lead's really opened up now. Um, the Legion's still has 10 points ahead, and I feel like in this game, 10 is kind of a magic number. I think when that gap gets to 10, it becomes really hard. Um, Craig managing to make a kill, but yeah, getting pincer moved, so he made the kill, but then he got killed. Again, 49 to 58. Lemugle Z covering some position. I think he's flashing because he's the current top scoring player. I think that's what that means. So that's our way of knowing that he's in, he's he's the boss. He's the Don. He's the big dog. Someone's overtaken him. Let's see if he can get it back. Okay, Luke still in the top over there. Um, Craig's gone to join him. Maybe they're having a retro. I don't know. Uh, could be some post-it notes. Bit of a conference. All right, Craig. You get out there. I must be wrong about the flashing. But Craig's gone on the run. He's decided to see if he can go and get some kills. It's gone quiet again, hasn't it? I think that the Allegiance team, so that's the Coddlings, are kind of maybe talking amongst themselves and becoming a little bit more defensive to try and hold on to that lead. Let's see what's happening now. Uh, Lemugle Z, again, really quiet. It's it's weird. It's like an ebb and flow, isn't it? And I'm sort of because I, <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm trying to be as neutral as I can, but I'm a, obviously a, a one-shot wonder sort of team member. And I'm wondering why they are so separate all the time. They'll kind of come together in this sort of connection for a little bit, and then they'll just wander apart. Sorry for the bad. Martin with a drop shot didn't work that time. He had the bad angle, and the Moogle Z took him out. Moogle Z really is you know, playing an absolute stormer. If you look at the scores, you can see the different scores in the top right and the top left. I'll explain if you're not kind of familiar with what those mean. So this being team deathmatch, the KD is the kill death. So obviously you want to have as many kills and as few deaths as possible. So you can see, and then where that skull is, that six, that is known as your kill death ratio. So that's essentially your kills divided by your death. So Zafara has actually got 9 kills, 15 deaths. Martin, as you can see, is, is kind of way ahead on this side of the team. Um, there's not much time left, so I think it's all over. This is going to be a Coddling's win. I think it's 10 seconds to go. Ticking down. Uh, we're not going to see that come back. 
the Moogle Z and the two little Moogles really um, kind of owning this. Um, right off, not a bad effort either, but a resounding win by the Codlings. Congratulations to them. That's going to decide, I think, make a bit of a change on, on what's happening on the overall Group B standings. Well done, both teams. Uh, hope you had fun and thanks for everyone who tuned in.